Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. Are you trying to mute me? No, it's just real loud. And I, can't I sold Amazon, but it was $25. <laughs> listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. Okay, so here I am with Allison Tyler Jones in the fourth part of our series from Pixels to Products. Uh, Allison, talk a little bit about yourself, and then talk a little bit about what this this fourth part is, because we're going to have two people coming on, and I'll just let you discuss that a little bit. What do you want me to say about myself? Who you are, where you're at, what you do. You got okay. to introduce yes. yourself. Yes. Okay. Yes, of course. I I, I knew that. Yes. Well, I'm Allison Tyler Jones. I'm a portrait photographer in Arizona, Mesa, Arizona, and we specialize in uh, families and children. And we are very niche. Uh, we specialize in wall art for our clients' homes and uh, custom designed albums. And that's it. We do not sell printable digital files. We sell wall art and albums for our clients. And I'm thrilled to be here and do this with you because this is going to be so fun today. So this is the fourth, we're, we're, this is the intro for our fourth part in the series from pixels to products. I mean, you've talked about how you don't sell digital files. You don't sell them at all. No, any social media files are provided with anything that goes on the wall or in an album, but we do not have a product that is a printable digital file, unless it's commercial work. That's a completely separate. Different, different animal, right. 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 But for portrait work, no, we do not. So, so for this for this segment, which we've uh, called Profiles, we're interviewing a couple people, um, Laura Blair and Catherine Langsford, right? We're, we're including them in the conversation, essentially. And what's your, what's your thought pre- process behind this piece? My thought process behind this piece is that I wanted to, well, you and I can be bossy, honestly. Oh. We're, we're just a little bit opinionated, <laughs> and I just felt like there might need to be another voice, okay? And but also people at different stage in their journey. So, yeah, Lara Blair, who we'll talk to in a bit, um, is a photographer in the Pacific Northwest, and she used to be have a studio outside of New York. She worked for many years worked in the Pacific Northwest, was the dog photographer, wrote the book on dog photography, and then quit because she felt like she was cashing in her kids, that she couldn't be the mom that she wanted to be. And, and she wasn't, the money wasn't enough. She she feels like maybe she wasn't priced correctly, whatever. So it it just kind of, she just kind of quit. And now she's come back into her own. She's Mm -hmm. reopened the studio and she's using all the things that she learned and she's moving forward in a new way. So I think it's very compelling. And a lot of her things that she has to say are going to resonate with so many uh, women in particular, but not just women. I mean, men and women, like people that have doubted themselves and wondered if it was worth it. So I'm yeah. really excited. For her. Doubt is a human issue, right? That's, it's not yeah. women or men specific. Con- I mean, yeah. confidence is what it comes down to in so many cases, right? And and that's what we find over and over again, especially for ourselves. And that is, it does not discriminate by any yeah. means. It doesn't. And it also, when we have that fear and that lack of confidence, it puts us into these boxes where we think that there's only, that, that there, there's this or this. Yeah, and, and neither of those things are really the great decision you know right, where right. really maybe there's 10 other things on the on the table that we hadn't even considered we don't so, even see them we don't even see them so we're, yeah. that's why i think it's interesting to talk to other have other voices that have been through that have been in the industry for a while and that are still evolving and still learning i would 100 percent put myself in that category like, so Catherine have- is the second person that we spoke to who say a little bit about Catherine then too so Catherine is a portrait photographer in uh vancouver canada Mm-hmm. So she's in a very big market there uh, in the city, West Coast. And she's just so cool. I love, I just love Canadians. I don't know what it is about Canadians. But I love Canadians. Anyway, she's they're a, nice. They're nice. Yeah, yeah. She's a good friend. She's great. Um, and she's run a very successful portrait business for 20 years. Yeah. This will be, I think her 21st year. Mm-hmm. And she has done all the things that we've all done, like underpriced, not valued. And then 
built this incredible brand. She's the go-to, like everybody in Vancouver knows photos by Catherine. I mean, she's every, you aren't even a hockey player unless you've had your picture done by her. So, I mean, everybody knows her. But um, when she and I met up uh, probably about five, four or five years ago, she was doing great, but she had kind of let some things slip in her business. Like yeah. she knew that she should have been doing, yeah. she probably wasn't doing them. Yeah. And so um, as we became friends and kind of uh, chatted, uh, we kind of have like at least once or twice a week, we'll chat on the way home from, from work mm-hmm. about like what happened today, you know, what was the problems. It's been interesting to watch her journey as she's picked up those things that she already knew and then also completely evolved her product process um, from selling like a lot of little, like a lot of little prints, a lot of little whatever, and some digital files because she does have a hybrid business. She does sell digital files as well as products. Yeah. How she completely restructured that and, and completely transformed her business. I, I think that there are two very worthwhile conversations uh, for people to glean from. And a lot of that stuff, so much is going to resonate with people too. I think, I think it went very, very well. I'm excited for people to hear it. Thank you for joining me. Uh, hey, where would I, where else would I be? <laughs> this, okay. is, this, this is fun. We'll jump, we'll jump right into them then. Well, I am so excited to have as our next guest, Catherine Langsford who is an amazing photographer and a legend in Vancouver, Canada. (laughs) I recently had some uh, clients come in from Vancouver, Canada, and I mentioned her name and they're like, oh, everybody. I mean, everybody who's anybody has (laughs) Catherine Langsford on their list. (laughs) She is there, has a very wonderful reputation, is also a dear, dear friend. And so I'm grateful that you joined us today, Catherine. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for inviting me. So, so fun. fun. Okay, so Catherine and I talk about sales a lot. It's kind of mm-hmm. our favorite topic. On the daily. On the daily. And uh, what I want, why I wanted to bring Catherine into our conversation is because Catherine's been in business for, this will be her 21st year, 21st, 22nd. Uh, I am in 22nd. Okay, 22nd. That's right. Because we just have to subtract 2020. It just never happened. I don't know what happened. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, 22nd year in business. And she's built a stellar reputation, has an amazing business. But about five years ago, when she and I began to be friends, she had, by her own words, lost her way just a bit. Hmm. She fell off the track. Little, little the, the wheels were starting to come off the bus. And so what I want you to talk about, Catherine, is just share with us, like, what was that look like? What was causing that? What did that look like? What was happening? And then let's talk about your journey about how you got out of that. Okay. So yeah, that was about 18 years in, and I definitely understood the value of in-person sales. That was something that I had been doing and had some success with and had some good averages. Um, I started to feel like I was getting more, I I think probably because my prices were going up and I was trying to sell more, I was getting more pushback and more comments like, oh, I feel like we're rushed. We don't have enough time. I don't know how to decide at this meeting. And can we go home and think about it? And Mm. lots of things along those lines. So I heard that so many times that I decided, you know what, I think maybe it might be a good idea. I had a moment of insanity. (laughs) And I think maybe it might be a good idea to let people see their photos online for a few days before we meet. To me, that made perfect sense. Before. Yeah, Yeah, a preview, an online preview. So that, because the issue was two issues. One, they felt rushed and they didn't have enough time to decide. And number two, they ended up having all these questions like, I don't know, like, do we want to hang in the in the bedroom or are we going to do one piece in the living room? Like all of those things were just overwhelming them in the sales room. So I thought if they have a few days to, to look at these um, portraits online before we meet, then they'll probably resolve all those things by the time we meet in person. This made sense to me at the time. Mm. Can we just underline that that was a moment of insanity in case anybody- Complete put insanity. Laundry out of the dryer and it's like, Oh, I should do that. Like, do not stop listening right now. Continue. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not denying that that was a moment of insanity. Uh, so I, I did 
I did make that my new sort of process. And um, what started happening was people were more prepared to place an order, but the orders were smaller. Mm. The orders were getting smaller and they were becoming smaller pieces and a lot of requests to buy the digital files because they loved everything and couldn't decide. So they just wanted it all, mm -hmm. but they wanted it all in small format or digital format. Um, and when they were purchasing work, it, it wasn't, I wasn't happy with the sales. So I was definitely in what I saw as, you know, a place of, I, I was, I was confused because the in-person sales hadn't been working for me and online was definitely not fixing the problem or having the hybrid of online and in-person right. wasn't working for me. Certainly not in that, in that order anyway. No, right. No, it wasn't, it wasn't working for me and I, and I, I was sort of stuck. So, um, from there, uh, I guess what I started to do, and I mean, this is, a, a, you know, during a time when, of course, you know, I'm talking with Allison Tyler Jones, who's just, <laughs> who's just horrified by my process. And, uh, we had a lot of, you know, we, we talked a lot about what kind of changes might help me out. And, um, I think two key things, I, I did two key things differently. I wanted to sell fewer pieces larger. And I also wanted to um, help people with their questions and with their hesitations in a way that would not hinder my sale. So I implemented the pre-session consult. Mm -hmm. So the pre-session consult educated my client, talked to them really clearly about what, what they want and what I do making sure that was a good match, making sure that they knew where they wanted pieces to live. That was a huge piece of information that I hadn't discussed with them ahead of time before, and it resulted in confusion in the sales room. Um, so talking about that right up front, where are we gonna hang this work? And if they hadn't thought about it, that's fine. We just, we start the conversation early before the session. So we'd have, you know, um, very detailed talks about where, how you feel about work on the wall. In Vancouver, I mean, it's a little different here because people are less likely to want, it's less common for people to have big portraits on the wall. Like people are sort of, you know, not wanting to put themselves in the forefront. And, um, and, that, and so positioning it as fine art, as a piece of their home decor mm. is, is something different here. Um, so that is something that I explore a lot more with my clients, um, you know, talking about their decor, what, what would fit well with the look of their living room or with the look of their, you know, family room and starting that conversation early, as well as having them send me photos of their walls so we can have visuals to, to go through and talk really specifically about prices. So I talked really about, you know, we would narrow it down to exactly what rooms are we hanging in? How big are we going in those rooms? Here's what I suggest. You know, I became more of a, more of an advisor to, to these people who, I guess in the past, I felt like I didn't want to hard sell. So I wouldn't push my own, you know, suggestions too hard, but I realized they really want that. They, they want to know, you know, what, you know, what does the photographer recommend? This is her work. What does she recommend for this room? How does she recommend that we, you know, uh, work with this piece. Should it be um, a gallery wrap canvas? Should it be a fine art print behind glass? You know, so I started giving more of my opinions um, in terms of suggestion early on. And then I would talk really openly about price. So, you know, before I sort of felt like that would sort itself out in the sales room, but there was problems with that. You know, often people would be clear about what they wanted, but when it came to the bottom line on the invoice, it was really not what they were prepared to pay. And I'd given vague idea of cost, but not specific enough. So now back at the pre-session consult, we would talk about, you know, if you're, if you're thinking of a gallery wall and you're thinking of a large piece in your entry, then you're probably looking at X number of dollars. And if that's just way out of the budget, then we would revise right then and there instead of waiting until I've, you know, blood, sweat, and tears in the, in the session, kids melting down, everyone's sweating and crying by the end. <laughs> and then it turns out that I've shot way too much because that's far exceeding their budget. So starting early with that really helped me to get more directed in my sessions. It helped to answer their questions. And it also um, 
gave them time to think about the stuff that previously they weren't thinking about until the sales room. Right. So if at the consult, they're saying, hmm, I don't know if we would hang a big piece on that main wall. I'm not sure if we want to do that. We don't have to decide today. Let's, you know, let me show you what it would look like. Let me tell you how much it would cost. Let me give you some time to talk about it with your husband. But that time is coming before I shoot the photos. It's not coming after I've shot and after we've had time in the sales room and then they've gone away to think about it and may never come back. Yeah, you so can have the exact same that. conversation, right? The exact yeah. same words, the exact same interaction in the, in the pre-consult as the sale and it will go completely different yep. beforehand yes. because your mindset, you're in a completely different frame of mind you're a lot more relaxed. You're not under the gun to like make a purchase yes. or anything, right? More of that planning phase. So even if you have the exact same, if they're like, oh, I don't really know if we want to do that. Different, different conversation beforehand than it is after. Completely different. Yeah. And when you say a lot more relaxed, that's really interesting because we are talking about the same thing. But yeah. when you talk about it beforehand, it's fun. Yeah, that's it. It is. Yes. It's fun. It's like planning a shopping trip or yes. planning, you know, this new great thing you're going to buy. Like right. it's really fun. And right. they, they, and there's a lot of other aspects to the planning that are fun, like clothing and, you right. know, like all the little things they need to do to get <laughs> ready. And it's really fun. Yes. And then in the sales room, because they've already decided that yeah. it's not stressful. Right. That's fun too. Right. Because we've already decided what they want. We, we already know where it's going to hang. And it's just the really fun part of seeing the photos right. in the spot where they, where they talked about wanting it. So that isn't a stressful experience either. That The sales room is far less stressful this way. And um, I have a far higher closing rate. Like mm -hmm. I have very few people that leave undecided. Whereas before that, that number was way too high. Yeah. And now there's, there's just nothing to not decide. We've already decided everything beforehand. The only, you know, all we're doing is picking the exact photo that's going to go in each spot, which is not, not too much to decide in one meeting. And they know that they're there to decide. Like they're excited to execute it because they've already made the decisions. They know what they're spending. They know where it's going. Um, so yeah, it's a whole different experience and people leave feeling sure. Whereas before I felt like people left, even when they did make the choice, it's like, they were still sort of, mm, yeah. is it like 50, yeah. 50 chance they're going to call back and maybe cancel half of it or put something on hold because they had decided so quickly. Yeah. So we the first people ever that have spent this much on portraits. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, they're they're unsure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So Catherine, I want to take you back. Um, let's go back to before the epiphany, before the realization. <laughs> When you were still doing the, the galleries and that, you know, so, so what you're saying is that people, the result of doing the online or sneak peek preview three days or so before they came in for their view and order with you and not doing a, a, an in-person consultation, yeah. what a lot, they're buying a lot of little because they, they had had, they didn't have you let, tell me if I'm saying this right, because they didn't have the expert to guide them and with them. They were just kind of like, when people don't know what to pick, they just want everything. And you can't afford everything. So you just pick a lot, a little and yes. get the digital files. Okay. Yeah. So I remember when we were having these conversations early on, you're like, there were things that were coming out of your mouth. Like I'm in Vancouver. We're in a busy city. People are not going to come in for a consultation. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Okay. And that was the feedback I was getting. We don't yeah. have, my husband doesn't have time. We don't have time. Can we just do it online? Can we just have a phone call? Okay. So tell me what, it, what did that journey to, getting them in for the consultation look like from, 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 I'm not coming and we don't have time. And, and even in your own mind saying to yourself, my clients don't want it. How did you evolve that? I, okay. The, the way that that evolved was seeing myself and positioning myself as the expert. So, uh, you know, I would explain to them how I work, you know, I work with starting with an end in mind and here's what that looks like here's what I will help you plan out. And here's how I'm going to help you execute a lot and, and explaining to them how, like, I'm taking a lot of the, the hard work of the big deliberating, you know, decisions off their plate. And mm -hmm. in most cases, people were so relieved to hear that because yeah. that's not how they're used to working with a photographer, that it wasn't even an issue that they'd have time for the meeting. They, it, it really was a non-issue. It was that flip of, 
you know, this isn't a meeting where you're going to sit there and agonize until you feel nauseous and then go home still not having decided. That's not what the meeting's going to be like. You know, we're going to talk beforehand about X, Y, and Z. I'm going to send you information, you know, out of that meeting. And then after, you know, our session is basically just going to be shooting all the stuff you've already decided that you want. And then that meeting is just going to be taking a final look and making sure that, you know, we've got the right things in the right place. And, and when we positioned it that way, um, I didn't have a problem with people not showing up. And I'm talking about, I have a lot of really busy clients. Like these are, you know, high level executives who don't have enough time to sneeze, you know, yeah. or physicians or, you know, just the, the, the type of professionals that taking time out to come to a meeting is kind of a big deal. And I, that's not lost on me. I'm very appreciative of their time. And uh, they show up time after time. They wouldn't miss it. They're excited to be here. And so it, it's worked really well. You were shocked uh, at that in the beginning. I remember. Because uh, you were yes. convinced that I just don't know if I can get people to do that. And But there was also a time too, Catherine, when um, you stopped doing the three-day sneak peek and you stopped doing the gallery and there, there had to have been pushback from the clients that, that had been doing it that way for years. Yeah. You know, we're like, wait, you're not going to do it. So talk about how you transitioned back. Again, uh, okay. So clients who had been, new clients, piece of cake, no pushback at all. They'll do it exactly the way I explained that I work because they don't know any other way with me. Clients who had had, you know, me, worked with me in a different way, um, in some cases, I explained how I was making their lives easier. Like, you know, I know we did it this way before and, you know, sort of these were the problems with that, with that way. And I want to make things more easy and efficient for you. So these are the changes I've made in order to improve the process. And for many people, they were really happy to hear that. And that was fine. There's a certain contingency of older clients who, you know, were not sold on it until they experienced it. Mm. You know, they were just sort of like, uh, okay, we'll see. But then once they saw the change in how much I was advising them and how much we were deciding up, up front, you know, most of them saw the wisdom of the new way. But I think it's interesting that what I think is really interesting about what you're saying is that you, you just said, this is what we're doing. Yeah. And then you, and then everybody, so everybody that you've talked to the new client, this is how we work the existing client. Oh, I, instead of, okay, I'm just going to grandfather you in and do it the old way because whatever, like, so I said it one time and now I have to do it that way forever. Yeah. No, and they don't really want it the old way. They mm. just don't oh. know the new way. Right. <laughs> they don't, I mean, they don't, the, the old way isn't working for them either. It, them sitting at home in front of a com computer screen, looking at a gallery of images is, is totally frustrating and not Horrible. effective. Yeah. And that's why they'd end up wanting everything because they just go round and round in circles about, you know, not just not being able to choose. And again, if, if I, if, you know, when I have them with me and we're looking at photos together, choosing is not even an issue anymore. It really isn't. Once we've decided, you know, these are the pieces that are, these are the sizes we want on the wall and here's where we want to hang things. The choosing of the exact photos that are going to go in there is not a big part of the process. And that used to be most of the process used to be just like, oh my gosh, do I want this one or this one? And his smiles better here, but I like his freckles there. I mean, that, that kind of conversation doesn't even happen, happen anymore because we've done so much of the selections ahead of time. I think that's so interesting because, and you just don't know it until you do it. And there's just so right. much, um, we spoke with another photographer earlier and there's just so much of this that comes down to that confidence and being willing to just say, okay, this is how we work. And, and there's every other business works like that. But yeah. for some reason, photographers, and I would say maybe graphic designers, maybe, maybe some interior designers, I don't know, maybe this is the creative arts or whatever. We tend to not be, we tend to not roll that way, you know? And so that's what I love about um, how when you decided to make that change, you didn't waffle. You're just like, actually, I know I need to do it. I know I've gotten away from it. I've gotten into this thing where I've, I, I thought it was going to be better. It didn't work. And now we're, we'd be changing now and we're doing it now. And this is what we're yeah. going to, and that's how you started to talk about it. And so, and, and it wasn't an overnight, it was an overnight with the new, with the new clients. 
like the, no, yeah. no, any different. So I was like, okay, great. And so I think yeah. it gives you a ton of confidence, right? It, it, because then you're like, well, okay. So th- these old guys can get on board. You know, I, yeah. I can't, they just don't know it. They just don't know they mm. want it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Get, well, and it gives you all the justification, right? So as you're, when, when you see how great the new clients love it, you're seeing the specific things they do love about that new thing. So that then when you're talking to the client, your existing clients, you can say, you know, what we found is the new clients like this, this, and this, and they particularly love that. And then it becomes a benefit thing rather than, okay, this is how I work. You know, it, right. it's more. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think they think, and I thought that they want to be in control of how the process will be. And they want to be, they, they want, you know, they want to decide how they're going to decide or how long they, you know, but really it's so much better and easier for them to have me um, sort of flip that process and, and have the discussion beforehand. It's what they want. You, you, you hit it on the head. And, and I think it's also, they want someone that's in that position that is confident, right? Yeah, they, for like, sure. They, they want a trusted advisor. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. They don't, they don't know about this stuff. I mean, how many times do we hear our clients say, I mean, even down to size format, like often I will suggest that this one should be gallery wrap in a frame. This one should, this should be the one piece that you go large with. Mm-hmm. These are suitable for a gallery. Like mm-hmm. I'll, I'll make those suggestions because they don't know. And, you know, rarely you'll get a really sort of visual client who does have a great sense of design and they do know. But that is a rare exception. And I'm very happy to, you know, we'll make it more of a collaboration in the right. case of those clients. But for the most part, clients do not know what they want where and how big each piece should be and what the best portrait is of right. the whole collection. Right. They're coming at it from a biased point of view. They love their family. They love their kids. They can't pick. So, you know, getting back to when we, when we sit in the sales room and we've already decided, you know, the sizes and shapes that are going to go on the wall and I'm just populating them with the images from the session. I choose what I think would look best there. And I show that to them without even showing them the rest. Most of the time, (laughs) like sometimes we don't even look at the others unless they ask, um, is there another one of my middle son? Yeah. Can I see? Because his yeah. smile's a bit weird there. And then we may right. go in and look. But to be honest, usually we don't. And they don't even question that. Yeah. Because we've already, um, I don't know, something about flipping that process makes it less important to comb through the photos. Because it's not really about combing through the photos. It's about, you know, we've decided we're doing this great big piece on the wall. And now, you know... We're just having the photographer create that and she did it. So rather than that process of we're going to shoot 500 photos and then maybe look at, hmm, do we want to do anything with these? Like it doesn't right. go that way anymore. And I can't believe I did it that way for so long. Well, and I think, but I think the very first thing you said is very telling. And I would love to just emphasize this. Like if we could have like, audio reverb like this is the most important thing is <laughs> that the very first thing you said and I wrote it down as my prices went up mm-hmm. and so that is a direct correlation that as your prices go up if you are not handling things like an expert mm. this you when your prices change, how you deal with your client must change. Yeah. And so I think that those two things cannot be divorced from each other. So it's just like anything else. You know, if you are walking into a surgeon, yeah. you know, and he's like, puts out like, well, we can use cat gut or we can do the sutures with staples or like, which one do you think? I mean, I don't know. How should we resection your bowel? How do you feel about it? You know, yeah. like you're going to be like, out the door. Yeah. I no, want to be like, here. <laughs> you want to walk in and have them be the boss of you yeah. and have them be bossy and tell you, look, we got this. Your bowel is going to be fine. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. This is the recovery and we're done. And now you're right. going to need like $6 million. Right. Right. So, yeah. But the, that confidence in being able to do that is just, it's a, it's a journey. Yeah. And also suggesting the specifics of the art that you're going to make. Like, I I think that piece is important. And I hadn't done that before. I I had always said, so what size do you think you might want this? 
or, mm. you know, do you want that as a canvas or a framed print? And I don't do that anymore. How do you frame it now? How, what specifically will you say in a, in a scenario like that? Instead say, of I, what think, I, I think this is the perfect format for this piece. Right. I think it should be this big and done in this way. And I love it hanging right there. What do you think? Like I, and you know, I'm not, I'm open if they don't like the idea, but you know, they don't, they're, they're not in their mind thinking, no, I think I need it three inches smaller. Mm -hmm. Or no, I think I need it cropped differently. They're not thinking that way at all. That's our way of thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's our job to think of that stuff. So don't put it on them, right? Like don't, they're not thinking that way. So don't, so don't put them in a position where they feel like they need to. And not only that, it makes them feel like you don't know. Right. Like, you know, you think about other, other, uh, like the designer uh, example that you give. Like if a designer says, do you think we should do that in like, um, velvet or should be <laughs> they start wondering why they hired you in the first place yeah why am i paying you what do i need you for okay. right. Right. but but what happens is we do get clients as clients uh and I, I see a lot of millennials now coming up that have been dealing with a lot of you know shoot and burn and they're used yeah. to call, they're used to calling the shots they gotta right. they gotta figure out their outfits mm. they're only gonna meet the photographer at the park when they get there that's the first time they saw the person yes. and and then the, the photographer the cute nice little photographer is gonna stand there and go okay well so what do you want like i guess we could shoot over there or we could shoot this or we could, so that those moms are like okay we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and so then they come in and they feel like they yep. have to kind of tell us and so it, you might take umbrage at that at the beginning but then once they start to see that you're like like I literally had somebody call me one time and go, I just want a real photographer. You know, yeah. I just want somebody that's going to tell us what to wear, tell us where we're to stand and then hang it on the wall. Do you do? And they love it. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. I get zero, zero pushback, except as I said, the occasional, very creative person who has a vision. And in that case, it's, it's a lot of fun too. It's yeah, a collaboration. It's just different. Right. Yeah. But no, that they, they love it. They, they love being instructed and being, you know, given the manual of how we will be working mm. <laughs> and uh, just sitting back and enjoying the service. It's a service. Like we're, service, you know, yeah. th- this is what they pay the big bucks for. We're going right. to lead them through from start to finish until it's on the wall and we're giving them a big hug until next time. It's, yeah. it's really uh, what they're looking for. Love it. I love that. Catherine, as always, you're a star. I appreciate you. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thanks for joining us today. And I'll talk to you on the ride home tonight. Okay. Good to see you, Catherine. (laughs) Bye, Jed. Thanks. I'm so excited that we have Laura Blair here today because she is a veteran photographer. You've been doing it. She's been doing it for many years in Camas, Washington. And she is selling product, but she's made some changes recently. And um, we just wanted to discuss that with her. So All let, right. let's talk. So, about- thank you for having me. And um, it's interesting because I've got history with the Toffers here because I took their class mm-hmm. in 2005. Was it that <laughs> long imaging. ago? What? Was it that long ago? Yeah. 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 I lived in New York at the time. So that's con- when things really took off for me. And then with you, Allison, you have kind of been the catalyst for me in the last year year and a half to owning what we're doing, valuing it and putting it out into the world that way. So thanks for that, both of you. That. And it was so weird that Jed was teaching workshops when he was in high school. <laughs> Middle school, I was, yeah, I was like 13. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so when you say that, which I think is really a compelling thought, you put like three things there, owning it, valuing it, put it into the world. So. We're, what I, we would love to discuss today is how you are, how you, how you might have changed how you're looking at product in your business, mm. and then also what are the speed bumps that you're still hitting? Mm. Okay. Well, interestingly enough, I had kind of a big hiatus in there. So just to give some background, I had my studio from 2000. Um, oh my goodness, I shot film. So I'm a film girl. Uh, I shot film and then I kind of like the talkers overnight. I went to digital and big learning curve and I shot for 13 years. I had my studio. I had it here. I had it in New York, right outside the city for three and a half years, which was a great 
huge learning curve also, but really helpful because it was a different clientele than the Northwest, very different. And I learned a lot there. I was the only photographer in a town of 10,000 people mm -hmm. and I worked too much and I had terrible mom guilt. I was on the podcast with Jed before talking about all of this before. Right. Um, and when I got home, I, I, I just don't stop. I, I don't, you know, the whole go big or go home. I always go big. And so when we came home, I hit the ground running. I created the studio again in our little town here. Um, Canvas is cute. It's probably, I don't even know the size of it anymore, but it's a pretty good sized town. It's right outside of a city. So we have a lot of people who commute into the city and it's a great place for a studio. It did well. I didn't price myself very well, I don't think. Looking back in those days, I didn't ask for help enough. I've learned so many things from that first go round. And then I basically burned out. Uh, before I burned out, I shot, uh, I photographed dogs. I don't want to say I shot dogs. Uh, for gosh, four or five years, I wrote a book for Amherst Media. Uh, it was crazy. I just sort of jumped in and I went to Portland and I was kind of the dog photographer for a while there. And I just kind of freaked out, actually. As a mom, I felt like I needed to be with my kids. I was going to the city a lot. I just couldn't handle it. So I quit. Like, I wrote the book and then I quit, <laughs> which <laughs> is not the best way to go in terms of marketing. Um, and I didn't price my stuff, my stuff well enough there either with the Tell dog stuff. Tell me more about that. Tell me more about didn't price myself well. What does that look like? Yeah. I don't think I judged my my clients as well as I could have in terms of what they were willing to invest because a lot of my dog clients were double income, no kids. They lived in the city. I really presented the work as art. I had a lot of displays in dog daycares in Portland. You know, I could have, I think a lot of it had to do with not being all in because I was thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to do this? Do I need to quit and be with my family? And I just, I wasn't all in. So fast forward to I quit, I went back to teaching. And then three years ago, I just like, I don't know, I decided divine intervention, tap me on the shoulder and just say, it's time to do it again. It's time to go again. So I quit teaching and I loved my job. It was great. I left on a good note, but I was thinking I could do this the way I want to do it now. My kids are gone. They're in college. I know what I want this to look like. I know what this kind of work is worth. And I just, I turned 50 this year. A lot of things kind of transformed for me where I created a space where I'm in it right now. It's kind of hard to see, but it's a really cool, fun space that people love to spend time in. And um, I felt like when they come, it's part of the experience. So the big part of it too, also was hiring people to do the stuff I didn't, I shouldn't have been doing. Like mm. I finally got a retoucher. Yay, Laura, got a retoucher, finally. <laughs> so that's huge. Cause now I'm doing a lot of my marketing and my social media, which I really enjoy. And the pricing part, I sat down with someone who does my sales and we just went through what we really felt like our stuff was worth. And it was scary. I looked at the numbers thinking, yikes, oh my gosh, this, who's going to pay this? And because um, I'm not my client, you know, so that's an interesting thing. And I have people who are my clients, who are my friends, and I ran some the prices by them and they, they said, I don't think that's ridiculous. So it was helpful to hear mm -hmm. that. Wow, well, basically. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And the biggest, the biggest piece for me was that we provide an experience. So we do the console. The home console is key. I won't ever do a shoot without it anymore. Um, for the kaleidoscope, which is our whole tween thing that we do that we love, and for families. Uh, I always go into the home or they come here to look in our studio closet, which is this cool thing we have. So we have a lot of extras. We have this big closet full of clothes for kids and dresses. And it's like dress up land up there. It's amazing. And uh, that's part of the experience. I mean, we have a full like a retro fridge. It's full of good drinks for kids and adults. And it's always uh, something going on here. Like with COVID, it's been difficult, but we try to have community events. We had like this paper dress contest last week where including me, five of us had paper dresses that were documented for our paper mill, which is here in the town. Trying to say, not only are we part of this community, but what we provide is so different than any other photographer in the area, whether you're in the city or here. And we're not the photographer you come to every year. And we're certainly not the photographer you come to just for Christmas cards. Like, like I learned from you, Allison, it's wall art and albums. I've written that down on my mouse pad in my office, albums and wall art. And I'm trying to communicate that as much as I can. This is not about getting digitals for Facebook, you know? So that's I would, the- I love, I love all of that. 
I love all of that. Congratulations for reinventing hey. yourself multiple times. As <laughs> I just, I don't even think you get to forty without reinventing yourself several times, and um, you know that's just part of part of life. Jed, do you have anything? On well, that? I I'm struck by, and 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 it correct me if I'm correct me if I'm not getting this right, but it seems to me that the the big piece that exists now that didn't exist before your hiatus uh, to some degree is, is a confidence. And, yeah. and maybe that comes from experience. Like there's a lot of reasons why that comes, but it seems like now you're bringing this confidence into the mix for many reasons, right? You're in right. a different spot in your life and you, and you know, the kids are older now. And so there's lots of things that are different now than then. And that manifested or one of the ways it manifested and has manifested is in your pricing. Right. Yeah. Cause you were able to sit down and now Allison, would, Allison might argue that, Oh, you, 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 you still might be on the low side. Right. Like, cause I do have to run the you, Allison. I gotta well, do it. That's, t- well, that's okay. typically the issue. If right. If everybody said, Oh, that sounds reasonable. They're too low. There's no question. <laughs> I mean, it's, I love the hard and fast rules of ATJ. <laughs> like, if, if, I remember like an old photographer telling me if like fully half the people aren't like, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Then you're not. You're doing it wrong. There yeah. needs to be a gulp. <laughs> oh, I have. I have husband gulp. The, the husband gulp for sure. Still. Yeah. Where are they? Yeah. 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 It's, they'll spend nine thousand dollars on a friggin' nine iron, but uh, you know, pictures of your kids need to be three hundred. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you certainly don't resemble that at all. I do. I. I. But I. I'm not. I don't have the ability, but I do. I do find that interesting. Is that that's the big piece, right? That for me, listening to you talk and knowing you too, that 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 confidence piece was an integral part of you doing what really needed to be done from a practical standpoint, yes. and that's raise your prices because you know you're 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 an author. Like this is in the before time, right? You're you're, you're successful or whatever that looked like. You 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 wrote a book, right? And then it was kind of a mic drop, but before. Before all of that, that you had lots of pieces in place, right? Lots of things were in place, but you didn't have a really big piece of the puzzle in place. The pricing piece wasn't where it needed to be. And right. I'm struck by the fact that for so many people, that can that that can like bring down the whole the whole operation, right? Yes. And that's why I got burned out, I think, because I was shooting. That's a lot. what I'm getting at. That's yeah. what I'm getting. If you were if you were making millions of dollars, that burnout probably wouldn't have happened. Probably not. Not in the same, <laughs> certainly not in the same way, right? But right. you're getting burned out because yeah, you know, your kids are young and the mom guilt slips in there. I've heard that a million times and I totally get that. I've also seen it up close and personal, mm. but uh, the real, uh, not the real, not the only, but a big piece of that puzzle is also that you're not bringing in the revenue that you should be. And, and that's what I, that's what I realized. If yes. I could go deep and not wide right. with clients, right. I knew that we could get this done. And I also needed to see that it was being done. And I think that's why I was so attracted to your stuff. Allison was the, I love the whole install thing. I love that idea. Like we hired someone to do that for us. So, you know, it's this huge deal to bring this piece of art into someone's home. I knew I could do it. I just, well, the other part of it is being confident in my art mm-hmm. and having the time to play and do creative shoots and all the stuff I wanted to do with the girls, which was develop this kaleidoscope thing, which no one was doing. And I was thinking, what is this? Why do I want this? I was a middle school teacher. So that was the thing. And when we started playing, because I had time to do that, is when I realized, ah, oh, this is something. And it's so valuable. We can charge for this and do, and do fewer sessions and go deeper. Yeah. So yeah, the whole confidence thing, I think you're totally right. That's what pushed me over. Also that whole thing about there's success out there. You got to find it and find out how people are doing it. You know, listen, read, watch. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I've watched so many videos from PPA in the last <laughs> year. And it's been, it's been very, it's been very validating thing. Okay. All this work that we're doing, it's not for not it's right. we're going somewhere. We're moving right. somewhere. So, and getting good people that is key. If there's anything I could tell people who are younger with this whole thing or, or not younger, just not as seasoned mm. is you got to get really good people who are all in. And I always hire clients because they get it and they're excited and they see the value in it. That's number one. And number two, they want to promote you and want you to be successful. So I've never, I've never hired anyone. I don't think that wasn't a client, which has always mm. been great. Mm. That's great. That's a great tip. 
Okay, so I'm going to take you back because I want to go back to 40 year old Laura or 35 or whenever it was that, you know, just wrote the book, Mom Guilt, because there's a lot of people that are going to be listening to this that have that same thing. And yeah. I have the same thing. And I think that um, where you and I, we probably came up against a very similar moment in time and where, where we diverged was that, and I, the reason I know this is because you and I've had another conver- prior conversation, but is that, um, you had, your husband had, had worked, right? Your husband. Yeah. And so it was, the whole thing wasn't on, on you. And so right. the difference was that for me, um, I, I, I decided that I was going to be the primary breadwinner and I was going to bring my husband into the business with me. And so there was not an option of, um, I feel guilty about being a mom and that I'm not there for my kids. So I'm working way too much. So I'm going to shut this down and go be a mom. That was not on the table for me by choice. You know, yeah. I was, and I had come from a previous business where I kind of worked out a few of those kinks. So I think it's very interesting that there are a lot of women that who, you know, they have dual incomes and they're doing this as either a side hustle or a full hustle. But when it gets hard, they're, they're thinking, of course, I'm going to choose my kids. And and that is the right choice. There is no question, but I would submit to you, is that the only choice? So is the only choice to be a crap mom (laughs) and, and work every hour and not make any money? Or could you chart, do what you're doing now Mm. as a younger mom and say, I'm going to go deeper and better with, with less clients. Mm -hmm. I'm going to charge more Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to work all the hours that God created. I'm going to get help. Mm -hmm. And so what I, my goal for this, I think both mine and Judd's goal for this series, because we literally, we've been in so many side conversations at various events going, dude, we got to do something yeah. about yeah, no, it. There's a collective thought. Yeah. 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 We got to do it because you just see it again and again. And Mike McCallowitz, who wrote the book, Pumpkin Pun, calls it entrepreneurial it. poverty. Yeah. And so, yeah, you're out hustling, hustling, but you're, but you're broke. You can't, you think you're getting money. And then all of a sudden the tax man takes it out because you didn't figure it out. You know, so it's just getting out ahead of that. So I, I think if you could probably go back, right, you would say to that younger Laura, okay, you can still be a mom and you can still have a business, but you can't do it the way you're doing it right now. You can't Mm. up late till 3 a.m. retouching every picture and selling it for nothing. Yeah. I can guarantee those double income, no kids. I mean, Camus is cool. Like it's, it's hip. It's cool. It's, it's she, she, right. Right. And, I know. It, it is, you know, and so, and so, and you were the only game in town and you wrote the book, you know, and so <laughs> and that, and this is not a failure. This is not a failure story that this right. isn't like, Oh my gosh, what happened to Laura Blair? That's so sad. What yeah. it is, is it's like, you kind of came into your power. You made the right choice for you because at the time, in your mind, there were only two choices. It was my business or my kids. So you made the right choice. Anyone so where, where were you when I was 35, Allison? Yeah, where I, were you? I know. Well, I, yeah, I'm not saying that. I, I, to, I, I didn't have a feed to follow. There wasn't anything. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm any smarter than anybody because I've yeah, made all the I know what you mean. No, because I've heard your story. I know where it was, where you started. I know. What I yeah. do is just go, okay, I, this has to work. And I'm only one person. Yeah. And so how can it work? with only one person, you know, and getting them. So anyway, I love that you said that. Okay. So now you you're doing these kaleidoscope sessions, which is young girls dressing up, building the self-esteem of young girls. Um, if you look at your, uh, Instagram feed, is it at Laura Blair? Photography. Yeah. At Laura Blair. And it's Laura, like Laura bar. No, you L A R A Laura Blair photography. And, um, go look at that because that's what she's doing with these girls. And it's just blowing up for her now present day. Yes. so you, you're going big. You've made some changes in the sizes of things I've noticed on your Instagram feed. I've seen big things coming up on your wall. Um, so talk to me about what's, you've talked about what's going right for you now. What are some things that you feel like you're still struggling with that maybe we can discuss and help you figure out? I, you know, I really, if, like, if I could snap my fingers and have everything kind of be different tomorrow. For me, it would be having a reputation precede us so that when people call us, they know what they're in for Mm -hmm. in terms of what they're going to get, all the good stuff, but also what the investment is. 
And I feel like because I've been gone and I'm back now and I'm doing this thing again and I'm doing the pieces that I know will help, but it's the talking points, being in someone's house for the consultation and, and, you know, them saying, okay, well, what do you think we should do? And I say, well, you should do this big size and this big size together. They would be amazing. Well, what do you think, what's that going to run? Those numbers coming out of my mouth and having the husband, you know, drop his coffee down the stairs. This, that's the thing that I'm kind of, and not just the husband, the mothers do it too, but I know we're joking about that, but I feel like I want it to just be like, they know that we're an investment and that when they call us, they know what they're getting into. We're still in that stage of having to, you know, to explain why it's the investment that it is, what the consult's all about, what I'm going to create for them, the art that I'm the original piece for their family that they're not going to get anywhere else or the experience for the girl that's going to change how she sees herself. Those actually, the kaleidoscopes are a lot easier to talk about investment because it's a massive session. It's like two and a half, three hours long. We've got two stylists. We have a makeup artist. It's a huge deal. And I love it that way. And I won't change it. But you look at that and you go, yeah, that's going to cost a lot Mm because it's a huge deal. With families, you know, shorter session, not a lot of changes. They come in, they do their thing. You're wrangling kids, you know, whatever family session involves. And then you're making the wall art. And shout out to White House Custom Color, by the way, because I did my whole studio redesign with them. And I, they talked me into a couple of things that I wasn't really sure about, like with metals and a couple <laughs> yeah. other things. And they've been yeah. selling, like the metals are great for kaleidoscope. Yeah. So um, really great stuff. Matt, he really talked to me about Matt this. Matt Hodgman, so, he's the man. I know. And he just helped me see what I wasn't seeing, which is mm-hmm. great. So I feel like we have those pieces in place. It's And I've decided to do the family sales. I'm just doing those. I'm going to have someone else do kaleidoscope. Um but I want it to be just me stepping out in confidence, you know, on the phone first, which is mm-hmm. where I'm training my uh, assistant. She's amazing. Erin is doing all the inquiries for me, talking to her every day about how do you talk about the investment piece, why it costs what it costs. And that's where it helps when it's a client that Erin was a client. So she can say why it's worth it. Um, and setting them up that, you know, that, that 80%, that's not my client that they just get off the phone quickly with her, mm. you know, okay, and let me stop you there because I have to, like, I'm about to explode. She's bursting. I I am. I'm like, I'm just, <laughs> You're just... A bottle of Diet Coke is about to. <laughs> so what I'm hearing you say, along with all of that confidence, as I'm still hearing, you know, the kaleidoscope sessions are really worth it because it's two to three hours. We have, I know. We have oh, you picked up on that one. So it's totally worth it. But you know, with family, it's way less to me. I'm like, how I would be hearing this. I'm like, how the kaleidoscope session sounds like a lot of work to me. It is. And how can I possibly charge enough for that? And right. the, when the family is totally where the money is, that's right. what people are willing to pony up for because the oldest kid is leaving or that like that's the thing and that's the most value but what but it's interesting to me because you're not alone because you sound like a wedding photographer and when wedding photographers mm-hmm. from the wedding world and come into the family world I have seen it over and over they give away the family stuff because they're so grateful to not have to spend 12 hours with a bride <laughs> and a mother right yeah. right oh my so god excited yeah. that they don't have to spend the time yeah so I would just challenge you to make sure that everything that you're charging in your kaleidoscope sessions, that your family stuff should not be any less than that. The session should not be like, you know, and we can discuss, but. The products are all the same. Right. The The value is not in the, in the time. The value is in the art. The value is not in what it's printed on. Sorry. color. The value is in, because they could upload to a lab off of their, cell phone a picture right. need us to do it the value is in the art itself and and that experience so yeah. that so doing what you're doing with all of having all of that stuff that you've created around the kaleidoscope having those same kinds of experiences with that family and just and then having that same confidence oh i just thought of something yeah i just i just realized something yeah. while you're talking do it the kaleidoscope for me is so easy to create these over the top, ridiculous ensembles. They're so creative and they expect it. Yeah. Families. This is the other thing that I struggle with. Mm. I do live in the Northwest. Mm. We're a little blah, bless yeah. our hearts. I'm from here. I can say that. 
when I moved back East, I did notice people were more willing to do fun stuff. That part is hard for me being in a person's home and saying, you know, or being in the sales room and having this really funny, cool picture that I would totally put on my wall that they're scared to put on their wall. It's not, you know, that's kind of like, I, I say to them, this is my recommendation. This is a shop that's going to have everyone's mouth on the floor when you walk in. And a lot of times they won't choose it because they're afraid to be different. I don't know. Like I, if I could have another miracle, I would like those families that are bold and brave and let me make my art for them. I'm not super confident in that yet. Okay. So what your, so your confidence will instill their confidence. Like how you are about it is how everybody else is going to be about it. So if you're putting, if that stuff is showing up on your website, you know, you got to have a couple of normal things, but like if, if the crazy and if the kooky, most of it is that on my website. Yeah. Right. People say they want it, but they are liars because they're yeah. too scared, but they want somebody that can do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they don't want the boring person. They might not ever pick it, but they want to know that you, because when they look at that, they go, Ooh, she totally gets personality. She totally gets family. Like I can't put that on my well because my mother-in-law would judge. <laughs> me. So that's fine. That, that doesn't yeah. matter. That doesn't mean that they're not going to, that instead of being in a pyramid in white shirts and khakis. Like a cricket red, team. Yeah. Yeah. So what I mean, they're, <laughs> they're going to pick the one that's a, that's got a, maybe, maybe the mom's not camera aware and she's looking at the kids or they'll pick it. So that takes a while to push that. And I will tell you my clients, even still, I, have, and my brand is solid and I have the reputation a hundred percent that most of them don't pick, don't pick the crazy. Mm. They, they might pick the crazy for the holiday card that we're creating Interesting. for the main one. It is, it is a, that's a five percenter that they're going to okay. pick the crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, so that's, that's normal, you know, that's normal, but, but I have like weird stuff hanging around my studio, things that are cut up and, you know, you know, canvases that are cut in half and parts and pieces going here and everybody loves that, but no, like again, 1% might actually order it for their home. Oh. They want somebody that's that creative. They want that photographer. So I'm not going to maybe buy, go to the mechanic for my car. I don't want somebody that's going to do the, you go, you know, I'm dating myself, but I, I want to know that I used to work for Ferrari. Like he can handle all the things he can handle yeah. my naughty kid. He can handle the crazy kid mm -hmm. and he can handle my shy kid because obviously she's making art out of all that crazy. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. So it's, that will already happen for you, but just know that like they mostly, people are scared and they don't like yeah. to get out of their box. And sometimes their husbands are against it. And sometimes the mother-in-law or whatever, but that's okay. Cause you're still capturing all of those other things and you're, right. and you're building that story into the images. Yeah. You know? Right. But, but I think right. albums are great too, because you can show that crazy fun stuff. And it's in an album. It's not on your wall. So I'm trying to push that as well. Yes, get this, but get the wrestling shot too. Right. Next to the family, right. you know, shot. Cause it's hysterical. Yeah. I Whereas I would put the wrestling shot on my wall. That's my personality. No, for sure. I, not I, my I, 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 yeah. We, well, cause that's the, you know, I, in my, in my gallery, in my office, I have this like lovely gallery in the middle of it. There's like this little word art that says happily ever after. And everybody's like, Oh, I love that. And so, but I'm like, well, at my house, my gallery has that same art, but instead of happily ever after it says freak show because that's, <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. I mean, with seven oh. kids and two autistic, like there ain't nothing but freak show going on in our house. So, um, so, but that's not reality for everybody. And there are people that don't like to think of themselves. There are people that have not come to reality about how crazy their family really is. So right. that's okay. We can help them perpetuate the fiction. This is not a sure. problem. Oh, New York was big on that. I'll tell you what. We're the happy family. And like, you know, oh, so it was for the Christmas yeah, card. Dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crying in the view and order about how they're on the verge of divorce. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, that's oh, real. Oh, my gosh. That's real. No, that was an eye opener for me. At least in the Northwest, they fake it. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. I I, it's so interesting, Laura, to hear your journey. And um, I just see nothing but upside for you. I, I see what you're doing on Instagram. I, we, you and I go back and forth on DMs and in, on Instagram and, and different things. And I just um, couldn't be more excited for the future for you. I just, it's just going to be great. And you're doing all the right things. 
And um, thank you so much for letting us partake of your wisdom and being vulnerable enough to tell us where yeah. it wasn't great because this is really going to help so many people. Yeah, I'm so grateful um, for this, for both of you having the history. And Allison, I just, you were the one that gave me hope. When I, when I really looked at it and thought, she's doing this and she's done it for a while and also hearing a journey of where you started, it really gave me the courage to push forward and just the, yeah, just your encouragement in general and asking, you know, me about this journey has helped me kind of define what I think I need to do next. Mm. So thank goodness in this industry, we've got people who are willing to help people who are struggling along because we need it right now. So thanks for, to both of you for what you're doing. I think this is information that women in particular, you know, who kind of gone through what I've gone through with their kids and everything, you can do it a different way. Mm. And thanks for leading the charge on that. Really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much, Laura. We appreciate your time today. Great to see you. You too. Hey guys, thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs> right there. It's there somewhere. <laughs>